in python we have a lot of uh, unit testing frameworks for example unit test py test nose doc test testify and there are a couple of other frameworks also for unit testing and we also have some uh, functional testing frameworks for example robot framework and these are also very popular these days in market so in this particular video we'll be talking about unit test and py test and we'll see how to use these two frameworks so first of all what we need to do is we need to create a, a set of functions that we'll be using um, as an application and we'll be writing test cases against those functions so the first step is we create a file and we write some functions inside it now let's say uh, we are writing some functions for uh, string operations so i'm writing down three functions uh, one is to concatenate two strings or to join two strings uh, where i'll be uh, needing two inputs from user string a and string b and uh, once user gives me as input two strings I will join those strings and return uh, to the user. Similarly, I'll write two more functions. One is to convert my text to uppercase and one is to convert my text to lowercase. This is a very simple example. You can also take an example of uh, mathematical functions. Uh, for example, you can write down functions for add, subtract, uh, multiply and divide. And uh, you can also consider that as an, that as an example. So now uh, our test functions are ready. Now if we need to test these functions, what we need to do is let's say I want to print the output. So I'll write down here print and I give the uh, function name and I pass on the arguments. So whatever function I want to call, I can give the name and I can print uh, the output. So if I need to run multiple tests, I need to repeat this uh, statement over and again and then I need to pass on different values to test different scenarios. So this is very weird way of testing a set of functions or testing one function because in unit test you test at a unit level at a block level so uh, writing code like this is not a good idea uh, what if we follow some set of uh, rules or set of uh, structure uh, which gives us more flexibility in adding or removing these test cases and even help in maintaining those cases in future so this uh, obviously is not a good idea Though it is uh, giving me the output when I am passing on two different strings, it is joining them when I want to uh, convert them to uppercase or lowercase, it is doing the job. But it is not a good uh, idea to maintain a lot and lot of test cases. If you have only one or two test cases, then it is okay. But if you have a big list, then it is not okay. So what I am doing is, first of all, I am covering through unit test framework. So I create a new file. File name is uh, test string operations. So what I need to do is for unit test, first of all, I need to import the unit test library. So as I import, because I have not used any function, it is uh, showing it in gray. Uh, but uh, as I uh, you start using it, uh, you will see it in a different color. So for a unit test, uh, what you need to do is you need to create a test class where you'll be keeping all your test cases. So let's name that class as test string operations. You can keep any name here. And inside this, you need to pass unit test dot test case. After that, we can start writing our test cases. Um, let's say the first test case name is uh, test underscore first case. Remember that all the test cases should have name begin with test underscore. Now let us import the file where we have written the functions where we want to uh, perform the testing. So uh, what we do is in this uh, particular uh, test case, First of all, I concatenate two strings. I pass on my name, first name and last name, and then I want to join them in a, and I keep it in a variable C. Then uh, I'll use another function of the same uh, file that I have created. Uh, I'll convert this text to uppercase and then I add an assertion here uh, in the end that this is the output that I'm getting out of these functions and it should match with the value I'm expecting like this. So this is one of my test case. Uh, similarly, I can write uh, more test cases. Let's say I want to perform only the lowercase function operation here in the second test case and uh, let's say some, some other operation in third case, test case. And I will also show you that if we do not keep the name of the test case begin with test underscore, what will happen? So these are my three test cases you can see here. After that, if you want to run your test cases, uh, you need to write uh, if name equals main 
uh, unit test dot, uh, dot main so internally unit test dot main is using a few tricks to figure out uh, the name of the module uh, what it do is it uh, finds out all the modules in your class or subclasses and then uh, run them as uh, test cases after that you just uh, go to the file right click on it and then run uh, your test cases as unit test if you do not see the option selected as unit test and see something else like pi test or nose test uh, you need to do some configuration changes you just go to file and then settings and there come to tools and here in the tools you will find python integrated tools option here you need to uh, change the default uh, test framework you can select unit test if you are using unit test you just apply and click ok and then if you go back and right click on the file and then uh, you can run these tests as unit test so it shows you it has run two test cases but we have provided three test cases the reason why it ran two test cases only is the name that i was talking about um, the name of two functions the, the name of two modules were test underscore first case and test underscore second case the third one is having a different name it is not having test in front of it that's why it didn't run so if you want to clearly see which all test cases ran um, you can write a print to see what actually is logged so in every test case i'm logging uh, a message in the end first test case second or third so it shows you that it ran only first and second it didn't run third test case so if you change the name of the third module so now it will run three test cases and the output you can see clearly so this way we can structure our test cases in a separate file so that's why you are not actually touching or you're not doing anything in your main application you're writing your test cases separately and you are unit testing each block so let us do one more thing let's say there is a particular step that you want to repeat before every step for example making a database connection similarly in the teardown we can write closing that connection so setup is a function that we use uh, to to call before every test module so in in this you can see i have uh, printed setup as a message now if i run these unit tests you can see that setup is called before every test module so this is similar to uh, add the rate uh, before method annotation in test ng and similarly we have a add the rate after method annotation in uh, test ng for that we have a tear down function in a unit test so if you do uh, let's say if you print a tear down message in a tear down so what will be the execution flow it will be like setup and then first case and then tear down then setup and then second case and then tear down and then setup and then third case and then tear down so it will be like that before every test method uh, setup will be called and after every test method tear down will be called so if you want something to be executed at class level once only like uh, uh, execute something and then uh, perform set of uh, test cases and then execute something so for that we have two different functions one is setup class and then other is tear down class so uh, the only different thing here is before setup class you need to put add the rate class method if you do not put it you will see an error so let us run it without putting that uh, thing here i am putting a different message here and if i now run you will see a error it says that you missed out something so that error will be gone once you put add the rate class method here on top of it similarly um, if you run it again it should pass Similarly, if you want to use a teardown class method, you need to again use the same add the rate class method in, uh, before that. So you can see the order of execution. It is executed uh, once for a class and then all the test cases executed in the same way as it was executing earlier. So if we add another method for teardown and by just copying and pasting the same method uh, and changing the text to teardown, and by putting at the right class method in front of it, if I run it now, you will see that at the right class uh, setup is executed initially, and all the test cases followed by, um, I mean, bef uh, before every case, you have setup and then tear down of a case. And then if all the test cases are completed of a particular class, it executes tear down. So let us move on to the next framework, which is PyTest. I'll give you a short time of it. So I'm creating a new file. 
uh, in that you first of all import pytest like you have imported the unit test in that then you need to change the default uh, framework to uh, pytest and uh, you also need to uh, check here if pytest is installed or not if not you can add it from here you can just search by the name pytest and then install package so once it is installed um, you you can start using the framework so once it is done you will see a success message here on the button and then you can click and close you will see pytest here right so now we'll be using the same functions that we have used in uh, in in a unit test since we have copied the code from a unit test we have used uh, the class instance which we do not require here in case of pytest because we are not uh, having any class here in pytest so i'm removing all the self dot and cls um, so i can directly use it like this and also i need to uh, change the assertion method uh, i'll be def using the default assert method to 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 ch validate my test case so these are the modifications that i'm making and after changing the framework and settings to pytest i can run my test cases and it will be giving me the same output like i was getting for the unit test i'm changing it to pytest now so i'll be getting same output all the three test cases will cases will be executed and uh, it will be printing the message first uh, second and third test cases now uh, we'll speak about the um, setup and tear down methods that we had in unit test so for that in pytest we have fixtures and these fixtures really make it uh, easy and handy uh, for which you need to write so many lines of code in, uh, in in unit test you can ignore all those by using the fixtures and fixtures are really powerful here in Py pytest so let us uh, create a setup uh, function here um, in, in pytest i am writing down a function and give it any name and uh, now in this case name doesn't matter because you will you'll be using uh, fixtures so um, here i create a method uh, or a function and here uh, on top of it uh, you need to use pytest dot fixture and define the role of it So uh, you can uh, print any message here that this is a setup function. Uh, after that, if you need to give this uh, as a define this as a setup method, you just need to pass on the method name as an argument to all these test functions. So it will treat it as a setup function. So now you will be thinking that uh, what we need to do for teardown will be coming on to this. Uh, the issue is we missed uh, add the rate in front of uh, add the rate pytest py fixture. So if you put this add the rate here and you run the test cases, you will see uh, that the two test cases where I have put uh, the fixture, uh, these executed before method before the, the, the test function. The third one I didn't execute it. So this is also important. Also the naming convention a rule that the name of function or the test case should begin with test underscore uh, applies here in pytest also. So if you see here, uh, it is now doing the same thing. If you want to use the same uh, for, for before class, uh, you need to just change in the fixture. You need to provide one argument here in the fixtures and you can change the text also uh, to, to see if the change is like this. You need to put the scope as um, module. So it executes uh, uh, the setup method and then all the three test cases and then it completes execution so that's how we can control um, all the things through just fixtures we do not need uh, to write the different methods like we used to write in unit test similarly i was speaking about the tear down function what you need to do is you need just need to put a yield statement in between uh, in within the same method so anything before yield statement will be executed as a setup Anything after yield statement will be executed as teardown. So you can run the same test cases and then you will see that setup is executed and then uh, the method and then teardown because we have changed the scope of it from module to every test case. So if I keep the scope again as module, it will execute like setup then three test cases and then teardown. So this way we can control everything through fixtures. 
So uh, you can also run these test cases uh, through command line also. Uh, for that, uh, all you need to do is you just uh, open command prompt and switch to the directory and then use pytest minus s minus v is for verbose and then uh, uh, you can give the name of file it will uh, or give or uh, execute all the test cases of that file now let us also have a quick look at the reporting also i am creating another folder i am using allure report uh, in um, in combination with pytest framework for that i pass on another argument allure directory equals that folder name uh, that is reports so when I run this test cases through uh, PyTest again, it will save some files in those directory. And if I want to see the report, I just need to use the command allure serve dot. You need to first install that framework for reporting. So you will see detailed reports of what all test cases have executed, what uh, steps were performed. You will get different statuses in terms of uh, uh, trends and duration. And you can also see in the timeline series so if you want to learn more about PyTest, Unitest or the reporting framework Allure, uh, stay connected to our YouTube channel. Thank you for being with us.